rifles in their homes. It took place at an isolated farmhouse, but even so, the robbers managed to attract quite a lot of attention to themselves. The victims were two women, one of whom was expecting a baby in just a few days' time. Neither was physically hurt, but the gang was armed with a shotgun, and the whole neighbourhood and the police want your help to find the men responsible. The attack took place near Nutsford in Cheshire, but our reconstruction begins at Stockport on the southern fringe of Manchester. The date, Wednesday, October the 14th. 10 to 12 on Wednesday morning at Brighton Road Industrial Estate. Brian Mottis said a warehouseman had gone for lunch. Eleven a.m. six days later, Tuesday the twentieth of October. This farmhouse is four miles from the nearest main road. Kathy? Yeah? There's someone here. Will you come down with me? I don't like the look of them. Anyone, are we? No. Hello. Hello, love. Is Chris in? No, he's not in. What do you mean he's not in? Well, we've come to do the job. He must be in. Give us your hands. Right, now, where's the safe? I don't know. Both of you, where is the safe? I don't know. There must be a safe. I know there's a safe. Yeah, look at that room. <laughs> oh, come on, love, where's that safe? There's no safe. Where's that safe? There's, there's no got to be safe a safe. Here. There's no safe. Where? Take my watch. Never mind your watch. Where's... What? There's cash upstairs. Where? In the dressing table. In the dressing table. Dressing table. Oh. The keys to the Porsche. I haven't got them. Husband's got them. Take, take mine. They're in the fruit bar in the kitchen. Will you go and get them? Now don't call the police. We won't. We won't. We won't. Don't worry, love. No. Just think of the insurance, eh? Right? just left. Don't put your foot down. Oh! 
Control to all patrols, observations for a white van believed involved in armed robbery at Bolling House Farm, Mobley. Over. White van on the A538, the A538 through Hale Village towards Altrincham. Received. Down. This is a private drive off the Hale Road at the north of Hale Village. One of the robbers was seen as he dashed across Hilltop, back into Hale Road, and then walked off towards the station. Ken Johns, how are the victims? It's a particularly horrid sort of crime, isn't it, in your own home? It is. Uh, fortunately, the girl has now had a baby daughter, and she's fine. But she's been through a very traumatic experience, as have all the family, so much so that they've now moved out of the house and out of the area. It seems a pretty incompetent gang. Let's come back to that in a moment. But where did, they, where did they go when they split? Do you know in Hale Village? Well, all we know is that they went towards Altrincham. They went towards Delahaye's Road, along Hale Road. Uh, from there, we don't know whether they took a taxi, they may have taken a lift, uh, they may have gone to the railway station. And we appeal for anybody that uh, could help us in that matter. The van was stolen, as we saw, in, in uh, mid-October. It disappeared then for six days. You must presumably want to find out where it was until Tuesday, the 20th of October. The main source of interest is that when this van was stolen, uh, it had on it some stickers. It had an Italian flag on the bonnet of the vehicle and also had a Costa Pure coffee sign on either door. And these were missing when the van was recovered. Now, the um, robbers themselves, we've got quite a good description of one of them, I gather. We have, and uh, there was a good video fit of it. This man is six foot tall, he's white, he's 25 years of age, he's very slim, with a pale, long, thin face. He had curly, untidy hair and was wearing untidy working clothes. That was made with a BBC graphics artist for Crime Watch. Apparently when one of the witnesses saw it, it was made by one, when the other saw it, she was absolutely astonished at the likeness. She thought it was such a good likeness that it made a shudder when she saw the picture. She was very impressed. Tell us about the string that was used to, to tie up one of the women. The string is, is very similar to cord used on curtaining and uh, it's been doubled up and knotted for strength. It's particularly unusual. Somebody might notice that, uh, that pattern of using string. I said that the, the gang seemed pretty incompetent. They were in a number of ways, quite apart from drawing all that attention to themselves. Yes, it was not a very professional job. Uh, they came looking for a safe in the house. There was no safe in the house. Uh, and they didn't get very much money from that job. There is a reward, isn't there? There is a reward of £1,500 uh, for any information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the offenders. And I take it you're not going to be too fussed who you give it to, provided you get the information. I just want the information. I don't care whether it comes from the f criminal fraternity, from the family of the offenders. Uh, I just want to clear this job up. Right. Well, the number to ring, as always, is 01811 You can, if you prefer, ring the Chester Incident Room. That's 0244 That's to solving our next case, which is an armed robbery on a van making a delivery to a sub-post office on a housing estate in Hartlepool. In the course of the raid, the gang used no less than four different cars. The most distinctive was a red BMW. There are only six like it in the whole of the northeast of England. And in the last few weeks before the robbery, several witnesses remember seeing it near the housing estate where the raid took place. For security reasons, we won't be showing any details of the post office van or the robbery itself. Our reconstruction takes place in Hartlepool in Cleveland. This is the central estate on the north side of the town, just a month before the robbery. A local resident, Mrs Davis, was trying to call her GP. Is it working, Mrs? Yes, my number's engaged. You can have it. Oh, charming. Mrs Davis says she remembers the BMW because it wasn't the sort of car she'd seen on the estate before. All right. 
Oh, we're in a bit late this morning. I've had a bit of an accident. Oh, I'll get a smack in the back bumper. I'll be all right. But she couldn't see any damage to the back of the car. Three weeks later, on another Friday morning, about a mile from the central estate, this woman saw what police now think was a dummy run of the getaway. She remembers the men were smartly dressed and carried walkie-talkies. And the BMW was seen again, this time on the morning of the robbery. At half past eight, near the phone box on the edge of the estate, a man in a trilby hat and camel coat was seen waiting beside it. The robbers must have had specialist knowledge, because in this junction box there are several telephone cables, but they knew exactly which one was connected to the central estate. The phones were still working ten minutes before the robbery, as in a nearby factory, this clerk was ringing the post office to order some stamps. And 15 at one pound. Bye. Seconds later, all lines to the estate were dead. The regular delivery van was now just entering the estate on its way to the sub-post office. Next door to the post office, the milkman was delivering to the grocery shop as usual. You want to eat, love? Yeah. Uh, the usual. Yeah. There you go, love. The first signs of the impending robbery were probably seen by Jane Robotham out shopping with her oh. children. Five minutes, when she's gone, we'll go for it. She was frightened and walked by. As the van driver went to inform the post office that the delivery had arrived, this Bedford Astra reversed up behind the van. Right, get him the arm! Get out, you bastard! Get out, get out, son, or I'll rock this round your neck! Come on! Stay down, you bastard! Come on! Five men were seen getting into the BMW, it must have stopped shortly afterwards for some of the gang to get out. By the time it arrived here, about a mile away, only two men were seen leaving it and getting into this silver Granada. From the map, you can see that from Warren Court, the Granada travelled about a quarter of a mile to Tenby Walk, where it was found abandoned. Then from Tenby Walk, it's about 100 yards to here, Gower Walk, where we know that about half past eight on the morning of the robbery, a silver Nissan Bluebird was seen pulling into this parking bay here. Police now believe that Nissan was planted here as a getaway car, and we know that the Granada was stolen from Northumbria, Northumbria. But where the bluebird came from or where it went to remains quite a mystery so far. Maybe we'll find out in the course of this programme. And the gang got away with several thousand pounds worth of cash and stamps and car tax discs. Mr Newsome is in charge of the case. The most noticeable, of course, of those cars, as I said, was the red BMW Alpina, which was stolen six months before the raid. Where do you think it was during those six months? Well, normally a gang would uh, store a car before use in a robbery, but that car had done 2,000 miles and must have been seen in the area, possibly the Tyneside area, and certainly at petrol filling stations. So people must come forward if they saw a car... Yes, I'm particularly interested in that Alpina. 
And the silver Granada was also stolen from Northumberland, not so noticeable as a car, but some quite interesting and distinctive things stolen from it. Yes, a very valuable set of Ben Hogan Apex golf clubs had been in the car when it was stolen, and those were missing when the car was recovered. Right. Those we're showing actually aren't the original ones. We do have just one that was left behind with a tan handle. These all look the same. Yes, the owner had kept this in his possession, and in fact, um, these were specially made for a very tall man. They'd been extended by two inches, and the handle is leather compared to the normal handle, which is a different colour. So these would be quite useless, then, to a normal-sized golfer. That's right. They are quite distinctive. So maybe somebody in all innocence has come by these golf clubs, and uh, that could be a vital lead to the gang. It could. The other thing that was left in the car was the driving licence. You brought in a replica there. Yes, the owner of the Granada was a Mr Alistair Smith of Morpeth. Now, that driving licence may have been used to hire vehicles, and I'm particularly interested in any that have been hired in the Tyneside area, possibly by the gang, um, under that name. Now, we have two video fits people might recognise, we hope. One of a man who was seen parking the Nissan Bluebird, where we saw just now, in Gower Walk. Yes, he's described by a witness as being about 35 years of age, thin, uh, short, curly, dark hair, and he's supposed to look a little bit like Robert Powell, the actor. Mm. And the second one was a man who was seen sitting in the passenger seat of the Red Astra van at about the time the cables, the telephone cables, were being cut. That's right, slightly younger, 30 to 30 five years of age. You can see he's got short dark hair with a fringe which actually comes over his forehead and he was described by the witness as being good looking. Where do you think the gang is from? I do believe the gang's from Tyneside. Right and the date we're talking about is Friday the 12th of February and the weeks leading up to that. If you recognize any of those cars we showed you or if you can tell us anything you think might help the police to find these men please do ring us here in the studio. The number is 01 8055 or dial Cleveland Police Direct, and that number is 0642-248-18. Leather, in fact, it feels like silk. It's made from skins like these, and the markings that you'll find on skins like this show that they come from a place called Gomshall Tanneries. Over the past two years, the firm has been subjected to a series of burglaries and to a robbery in which staff were threatened with a shotgun. We've reconstructed the latest of these raids, it took place about a month ago, and maybe you can help. Incidentally, the company have asked us to point out that they've now changed their security procedures. The film begins at Newlands Corner, which is just off the A25 in Surrey. Walkers and picnickers are attracted to the rolling countryside that surrounds the Guildford to Dorking Road. Gomshall is on the main road. It's mentioned in the Doomsday Book. It's a picture postcard village where strangers are easily noticed. There's been a tannery here for over 500 years. During the Victorian period, Gomshall Tannery thrived, and gradually the company developed a worldwide reputation for high-quality sheepskin leather. But now the company has been taken over, and production has been transferred to other parts of the country. It's Friday the 2nd of September. On her way to work, this woman noticed a white van parked in Coal Kitchen Lane opposite the tannery gates. At lunchtime, two men entered the post office down the road and bought some sandwiches. Hello. You won't get a sunburn today, will you? Hmm. You won't get a suntan all week here. <laughs> the first witness was leaving the tannery late that afternoon when she noticed the men walking along the main road. Who were they and where had they been during the day? At about 6.30, the two were spotted wandering back towards the tannery gates. Another villager noticed one of them stop and walk a few paces back. It was a few minutes later that two men broke into the tannery. So as not to be discovered, they put a brand new crown padlock on the gates. The box van was spotted being driven in. It may have had a red logo on the front above the cab.
they took only the best quality leather. One box was later found like this. The skins they stole had these distinctive gomshal stamps. The A shows their top quality. The thieves also stole two boxes of rare New Zealand leathers. They probably left at about 8.30 just before the security guards made their regular check. They made off with 56 boxes worth 82,000 pounds. There's a strong possibility that the Gomshall break-in may be linked to three earlier raids in southeast London. They all took place at this warehouse in Rotherhithe. It was also owned by Gomshall tanneries. In 1986, two men tricked their way in. Can I help you? Sorry to bother you, Chief. Yeah, we're from the uh, security company. Just come to do a routine check. Is that all right? All right. Just through there. Terrific. Won't keep you long. Thanks a lot. They tampered with the alarm system and later returned, broke in and escaped with top quality leather. Then, in July 1987, Again, only best quality leather was stolen. And in December 1987, as a legitimate customer came to the door... Uh, can I? Hey, yeah. I'm fine. Get back! Get in the corner! And you! Stay over there! Again, they went straight for top quality hides. In total, Gomshall tanneries have lost well over a quarter of a million pounds worth of stock. We can presume that these are professionals. They probably come from London. They presume they have a, a receiver already set up. This is a huge quantity of, of leather that they've taken. Tell us what we know about the men. Yes, we have a description, um, which we've got a video fit here, of one of the men. He's six foot, late twenties. Um, his hair is dark brown and it's greying at the front. Now the witness states that that is more natural than streaked by a hairdresser. And the, the second male is also late twenties, but of a more muscular build with a moustache. OK, both wore tracksuit trousers and, and trainers in the Gomes for Raid, though they probably discarded those. Where did the van come from? What do we know about it? We know that uh, it is a Luton bodied van and we know that there is a, a red logo on the front over the cab and also a red logo um, on the back door there so obviously we'd like to know who um, may have hired that van or lent, if anyone lent it to anybody over that particular weekend leather experts will recognize this is very high quality leather these markings on here of course again they will have seen although it's quite easy to rub this off to, to get rid of it but obviously any leather merchants who've uh, got high-quality leather like this might like to call us because there's a substantial reward. Yes, there is a reward of 10% uh, for any information uh, in this matter. And some of these skins are very distinctive. Very quickly, just explain what this yes. is, for example. This is called uh, Contour Napper, and it is solely manufactured by the Gomshaw Tannery. Um, and it's very, very distinctive. distinctive. Okay, well, here's the number if you can help. 01811-8055. 01811-8055. Or you can call Guildford Police. 0483 311 That's 0483, the code for Guildford, 311 11. Banks have tightened up their security measures against armed robberies. As a result, though, raiders have turned to hold-ups in the street, going for the vulnerable moments when cash has to be taken into or out of buildings. These attacks have in part transferred the risk from bank staff to security guards, but also to passers-by. Our next appeal is about one such raid, which took place in Greys in Essex, where dozens of people were in the line of fire. The only actors in the film that follows are those who play the robbers. The witnesses all reenact the parts they played themselves. The reconstruction begins a week before the raid in a quiet road in Greys,
called Parkside. I looked out of the window and saw a young man get out of the car. I just thought, I wonder what he's doing. And so I went to the door, opened the door and went out as he was walking down the road. He turned round and looked at me and I looked back at him and then came in. I was going to shout, what are you doing parking there? But I thought, oh, mustn't be that noisy. In this road, it's very narrow, and cars just don't park outside my house unless they're visiting. One week later, on the eve of the robbery, three vehicles were stolen in different parts of London. This 750cc Honda was taken from Lee Street, Hackney. This 750cc Suzuki was outside a motor parts shop in Godston Road, Kenley, near Croydon. And this metallic grey Sierra was stolen from Perry Rise in Sydenham. Next morning, those two bikes were seen in greys. No one could have known it, but the robbers were practising their getaway. In this alley by the state cinema, they were seen talking to a man who was carrying a sports bag. This taxi driver saw them moments later. Two bikes pulled out from the alleyway. And uh, the only thing that struck me really was that they seemed very professional. It reminded me of courier drivers. This witness told the taxi driver who'd seen the motorcycles about half an hour earlier, and he got another driver to radio his base for help. This motorist, meanwhile, was looking for a parking space, but changed his mind. What's going on here, then? Is it on robbery? Has anybody called the police yet? I don't know. behind 25,000 pounds. Did you see them weaving past traffic on Orsett Road? You might have noticed that the pillion passengers weren't wearing helmets. Whitehall Road, a young man with bleached blonde hair had been minding the getaway vehicle. The blue 
hatchback has not been traced, but the Sierra was abandoned outside the bungalow in Parkside Road, where a blue hatchback had been seen a week before. Do you know where they went from here? Mr. Whitehill, there's a very big reward out on this, isn't there? Yes, there is a £30,000 reward. And the interesting thing is it's not out on recovery of the money, though an enormous amount was stolen, over a quarter of a million pounds. It's for the arrest and conviction of the men. Now, why is that? This robbery took place in broad daylight in a busy street in a busy town. There were many members of the public there, and there was a great danger to the public, and I think this £30,000 reward is an inducement for people to give them information to catch these robbers. OK, clearly there are members of the underworld who might have heard rumours on this. There's a very big reward. Tell us about the good description we've got of one of the robbers. The gunman was a white man. He was 5 foot 8, 5 foot 10 tall. He was a muscular, stocky build, wearing a green combat jacket. Right, what we're watching here is what's called an e-fit. There's an electronic version of a, of a photo fit. Now, there was a description of two others, but not quite so good. Yeah, the second man, the black man, in the actual robbery itself, was five foot ten to six foot tall. Again, muscular build. He had a, a flat-topped style haircut, uh, razor cut at the sides, and was wearing a blue, blue wind cheetah. Then, of course, there was the young man who was apparently guarding the, the Blue Sierra. Yes, as we saw in the film, um, he had bleached uh, hair, very neatly cut, um, and witnesses describe him as boyish, almost feminine looking. Now, it's his car that hasn't been traced. The, the Sierra, of course, was abandoned. That's right. And I'd like to emphasise that the hatchback, although it's portrayed in the reconstruction as a Fiesta, mm -hmm. it may have been an Astra or a similar car. We just don't know. OK. It's quite significant how those cars that were... And, uh, how the car and the two bikes that were stowed for the raid came from various parts of London. There yes. might, might be a pattern in that. It may well be, and there may well be that someone knows of a connection between Kenley, Hackney, Sydenham and the Grays area. Kenley is in the Croydon area, of course, and why would somebody have travelled all the way down to Croydon from East 8 or all the way up to East 8 from Croydon? Why that spread of, of thefts? The pattern might be uh, helped to be solved by, by these helmets. Now, these are among the helmets that, that were ditched. This one's very distinctive, isn't it? Someone's going to recognise this one. Yes, I'm sure someone must recognise this helmet. Just below the face visor, there are six holes drilled as extra air holes. Um, and I'm sure that someone... Four on one side, two on the other. That's correct. And I'm sure that someone must recognise this helmet. And they'll uh, recognise how difficult it was to drill through because there's an attempt... Of course. Drilling a, drilling they may have been stolen from them or they may have lent it to someone. And this might also have been stolen. This is yes, this okay. is a Nolan make. And the significant thing on this side is N33 Air System 1. That was dumped with the other helmet. So if you made the holes in that helmet, or if you had this one stolen from you, if you can work out anything to do with the, the pattern of uh, the theft of the motorbikes or of the car, if you've got any information at all on this case, remember that enormous reward, you can call us here on 01 811 8055, or you can ring the incident room direct. That's on 0245. Four five two one two eight. We have a curious attitude to crime. We deplore it. We know it causes a lot of grief, but still, people are ambivalent about solving it. Many of us use disparaging terms like snitching or grassing or shopping someone, as though it's somehow wrong to help stop crime. In our next case, there was no honour among thieves whatsoever. It was nasty, brutish, and so violent that our reconstruction has to sanitise it to make it acceptable for viewing. It takes place in East Ham in East London, and some security details have been changed. I think, uh, Working since last ten years, seven days a week, from 8.30 till 8.30. I don't like taking days off. I'll uh, enjoy more at work than sitting home. Even now, I just sit home a couple of hours, then get bored and come to the warehouse. Doc's brother, Jeet, also helps run the business. You're coming home, Doc. Say it already, you know. Uh, you go on. I'll be home soon. All right. Don't be here all night. <laughs> no, I won't. Doc is maybe one of the hardest physical workers in the family. Eight, nine, twelve hours a day and uh, no break. And when you put that type of effort, I think every business will be successful. Oh, come 
on, Sham. Come on, go home. We can always finish this tomorrow morning. Come on. Ajit. Yeah, I know. You want to go down to the bank, right? Yeah, there's too much for me to take on my own. Well, let's go. I've got the car waiting outside. Normally, a security company collects their takings, but that month the brothers were doing it themselves. Thanks, Mr. Sander. Bye-bye. It's nice business, Bob. It's been as dead as a door now all day, Fred. Really has. I think this is the first phone call we've had, and you're the first person who's been in the office. The brothers are security conscious, and they keep their yard under surveillance. At five past one, they were recorded leaving for the bank. Sometimes we do change the route. But that particular day, we, I don't know, got busy talking and stuff, and we didn't do it. So we went straight to the bank. I was going to the bank. My sister had gone on holiday for a week, and she asked me to do some banking for her. Hey, come on, who's that? Stop looking about. Shoot him! What are you doing? Leave them alone! God, it's an armed robbery. Get back from the window. Get back. Yes, there's an armed robbery in Barking Road. Yes, it, um, East Ham. Um, that's the Bank of India, near East Ham Town Hall. Oh, he's being battered now. Please hurry. Yes, Barking Road, the Bank of India, near East Ham Town Hall. Leave me, leave me. There's something snapped in me, and I just ran into the road, screaming for help. The robbers eventually fled empty-handed. Two officers at the local police station heard the commotion in the neighbouring street. Safe, they've gone. Oh, no God. one's going to hurt safe. you. Thank God. <laughs> I thought we have been very lucky and we haven't been shot in the stomach or in the chest or anywhere. Your head is okay? Yeah, head's okay, yeah. I think what we went through, we've been very lucky to be alive. Next time they might think, let's just shoot them over the head or wherever and get it over with and take the money. Now, as I say, we sanitized that rather. Both Doc and Jeet were shot repeatedly, eight times in all, at least. An air ambulance was called, a helicopter landed there. Even so, Jeet almost lost a leg. Now, if you know who the culprits are, please don't give us second thought. Just ring us, 0500 600 600. And if you're not certain, there are still some more clues. Bob Chamberlain has brought some of them with him. Also, you've got a very, very good description of at least one of the men and, and something more on the other one. Tell us about the one you know most about. He's, he's a white male. Aged 35 to 40 years, heavy build, chubby face. He's got fair gingerish hair which pulled back into a ponytail. He's got a moustache and several days' growth. He was wearing a black nylon bomber jacket and blue jeans. What about the other guy? He's six foot, six foot one, wearing a cream-coloured top, blue jeans. 
Now, the motorbike, you recovered, you know a fair bit about it. Tell us about it, will you? It's a blue and white Yamaha XJ900, which was stolen in February 1994, over a year ago. Now, the registration on it, we don't want to know anything about this registration now, incidentally. It was a ringer, so this is a legitimate registration plate. We want to know where this plate was made up for this bike, though. L593HYH, so if you're a garage proprietor or whatever, and you made that up or might have done, could you check your records, please? So that bike has been missing somewhere for a whole year, 15 that is, months. That is correct. Now, you've brought various things with you. This helmet, I'm wearing a, a glove to handle it because it's covered with chemicals for, for forensic tests. Very, very distinctive. Uh, on the back it says Harry there. Again, you don't want to know where that comes from, only if someone could link it with some of this description. Tell us about this jacket that was thrown away as, as well. It's a black nylon American style uh, bomber jacket, which is um, model a, a, M, M, A2. Okay, MA2. Again, we don't want to know where that comes from, only if you can link it with the person with this robbery in some way or other. Where was the bike uh, dumped? Because that you was, want witnesses to that, of course. That's correct. It was dumped in some garages in Park Road E6. Um, from there, the people have made their escape over the railway bridge where they discarded the crash helmet. From there, they've made their way through and thrown away the jacket in through the road. Okay. Well, if you can help, please do. There is a very, very large reward, tens of thousands of pounds, but... Uh, please just call out a principal. It's uh, 0500 600 600. It's a free call, remember. And it's only a local call from East Ham to Scotland Yard, 0171 230 2061. In Essex, late on a Sunday evening, the 23rd of April, a man was seen outside the Regent Leisure Centre in Stanford La Hope. He appeared to just be standing there watching something. Our film begins at the same time a week later. That's 11 p.m. on Sunday, April the 30th. Oh, hello, Jean. You're not change for the 20, would you? I'm trying to cash up downstairs. Yes, sure, no problem. I've worked at the Regent for 17 years. Trevor managed the snooker halls, and I managed downstairs as a bingo hall. Oh, I want to be away after the last session tonight because I want to catch the last round of the bowls. You'll do the alarms, OK? Yeah, no problem. Terrific. Have a good time. Cheers. Bye. On behalf of Jean myself and all the staff, I'd like to wish you all a very good evening. Please have a safe journey home. We'd recently joined the national game. The top prize money is £75,000 each night. And we'd had a lot of publicity about it. We'd advertised the fact. But obviously, we don't keep that money on the site. When I'd actually lock up the bingo hall and, and, I, and I left, um, I knew Trevor was still upstairs. There was people obviously still playing snooker. Um, and Trevor would be responsible for locking the front of the, the building up then. Give me the keys. What well, keys? I've not got any keys. When he first sort of grabbed me, I thought, well, I'll, you know, show this guy that I'm not scared of him. I was hoping that he was thinking maybe he'd made a mistake. Or believe me that I had no keys. But obviously, when I felt this sharp object in my throat, I thought, back off, Jean, and keep quiet. Open up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was well built, muscly about six foot, six foot two. I would say he was about 30. Hair shaven, skinhead, and very dark, small eyes. So I'd probably sat for about an hour, but it was probably maybe a couple of minutes, and I then thought, Trevor's upstairs.
Jean. Okay, hold on. Are you hurt? I'm okay, I'm fine. This is the knife man. He's about 30, six foot tall, skinhead, well-built, small, dark eyes. Graham Carter, how can people help, apart from obviously recognising him? That's right. Obviously, we're interested in tracing anybody who is in the area of the Regent Bingo Hall between 10.30 and midnight on Sunday, the 30th of April this year. This guy was sort of hanging around the car, but it would have been pretty obvious. That's right. It was, uh, it's a fairly busy road, but it's, it's obvious if anybody is hanging around. There's also a sighting of a man of very similar description seen in the rear car park of the bingo hall a week earlier. And we'll obviously be very interested in tracing him, either to eliminate him or uh, he could well be our suspect. And as we saw, there might have been another man in Conningham Road. Also, somebody might have seen the cashier being bundled down the road, not realising there was anything other than a lover's tiff or, or something like that. Well, that's right. He made a point of holding her very close to him, so it could have looked quite normal or, in fact, just a couple arguing. So, if anybody's seen anything slightly suspicious, then please contact us. If I think I know who this is, but he's a friend of mine, persuade me to, to ring in to shop him. This was a horrendous attack on a defenceless woman. Although she wasn't physically injured, she was subjected to 10 to 15 minutes of physical abuse, threats, and a sexual attack was threatened to be made. So I would ask anybody who's got the slightest idea who this man might be to ring us and let us know before he strikes again. Okay, if you do recognise him, if you can help in any way, please call here. The studio is 0500 600 600. If you prefer, you can call uh, Essex Police Headquarters 01 245 452 For robbers who, when they see our reconstruction, may be haunted by feelings of remorse, or even if they're superstitious, by the ghost of a woman whose portrait they stole from an old rectory near Aylsham. It was among a collection of paintings and antiques taken from the house in June, and for what it's worth, legend has it that the woman in the picture can create unsettling events wherever her portrait goes. What's up with this old boy? Is he alright? I think we better get out and see. Help me. Can you help me? Are you alright? Are you alright? Oh, I've been burgled. Oh, he's taped up. We'll get you free, we'll get you free. Hang on. Are you, are you hurt? I'll no, get just get this off my wrist. You've lived in this village for almost 40 years and have always felt very secure in this old house until the beginning of June. Morning. Sorry I'm a bit late, Brian. I've been queuing at the baker's. Oh, it's all right. You didn't have any browns. So I got you white. Oh, that's nice. You know, it's such a nice morning, I think I'll mow the lawn. Right. I'll get this unpacked and then I'll get started. Can you tell me I went to Buxton? Buxton? Yes, you're not far Well, off. I didn't like how he was looking in the house. We weren't actually looking at me. He was interested in looking inside the house. You can't miss it. Uh, sorry, I just left out the drive. I told you, right out the drive. And that's signposted. OK, thanks. Thank you. Man, what do 
He said he wanted to know the way to Buxton. Well, what made him come up here? I don't know, Brian. I didn't like the look of him. Here's the number, just in case. Oh, thank you. That's clever of you. Oh, hello. Uh, is that North Walsham Police Station? Oh, it's Brian Hall from the rectory here. We've just had a suspicious van here. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's Brian. Oh, and we've got the number, if you want it. E936LYN. Time to go. On the action desk that all this week is National Youth Work Week. And I know that in a moment you'll be talking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Excuse me. Yes? Could you tell me the way to Buxton? Buxton, yes, of course. Uh, end of the drive, turn right. The cross he, he was pleasant, he, neatly dressed, not scruffy in any way. And I turned and looked at the registration number and I remembered L-Y-N. I saw this grinning face looking down at me and a rather long pointed knife. I really just at that moment thought, well, this is going to be the end. Every single item of silver was taken and it was devastating. And they certainly knew what they were after. I can feel it now, someone removing the signet ring and it had been given to me by my father on my 21st birthday and had the incised uh, device of a Talbot's head, which in fact is a hunting dog. Well, the, the, the whole event was, was, was devastating. I just can't settle down because one has lost this sense of security, I think, and I feel very, very cross in the way that it's affected my health and the fact that for the first time in about 50 years I had to see doctors. Brian Hall putting on a very brave face, but as we can tell, the ordeal really did have a very bad effect mentally and physically on him. Detective Constable Nick Buck is leading the inquiry. Nick, what do we know about the robbers? The first man who came to the, uh, the house on, uh, the f on the first occasion, which was Friday the 2nd of June, was in his 20s, six feet tall, slim build. He uh, had dark brown, wavy hair and was, of, uh, was reasonably well spoken. The second man, uh, on the uh, day of the robbery, which was Thursday the 8th of June, he was uh, quite different. He was about the same age and about the same height. Um, he was stockier in build and had light brown hair. He was uh, generally smart in his appearance, appearance, however. So both very plausible. Indeed, yes. Now, one particular cute clue you have, of course, is the van about which you found more information after the robbery. Yes. Um, five days after the robbery, an anonymous phone call was made to the New Cross Sorting Office in London. As a result of that phone call, uh, the van, which was a stolen parcel force van, which had been repainted brown and had false plates fitted, was found uh, in Rotherhithe, South London. So you want that caller to ring you again? Indeed, we'd like that caller to ring us. We feel they have very important information to give us. Just briefly go through some of the items that were taken. Um, there were around 200 items of antiques, paintings and silverware. Included in that was uh, this painting. It's a photograph of the painting that was stolen. Uh, this is a painting of uh, a lady called Henrietta Nelson, who uh, died in 1815, was buried in the grounds of her home at uh, Yaxley Hall in Suffolk. New owners of the hall, however, moved the grave and buried her in the uh, family vault. As a result, her uh, spirit uh, roamed the grounds.
So I'd imagine they'd be quite keen to get rid of that portrait as we, quickly as possible. We'd like to think so, yes. Now here's the, the family crest as well on the stolen signet ring. It's a hunting dog called a Talbot and it's a shield with a motto underneath. It may be on some of the other items stolen as well. If you have seen it or you can help in any way, here's the number, a free call here to the studio or you could ring the incident room direct on 01692 401034. That's North Walsham 401034. Waterloo Station isn't exactly the easiest place to stage a robbery. The chances of being caught, or at least caught up in the commuter rush, must be pretty high. But even so, in July, a small gang caused a minor drama at the station and a major trauma for the staff. I will, and the Jackie Collins. Will it be okay if I go on my break at seven ish? Can I borrow your paper, Ruben? Yeah, but well, give it back. I haven't done a crossword yet. Sure. That's fine. Yeah. When you go back to the shop, can you take this bag with you? Thank you. Sorry. Hi, I'm running out of change soon, so... Okay, I'll give the cash officer a buzz in a minute. Okay, right. cheers. Look there! Sign up, I'm a bloody criminal! Come in! Come in! Where's Kate? Where's Kate? I'm the door! He's dead! I was really terrified. I was confused. I thought he was going to kill me. And uh, I realized there was no way I could overcome him. When he pulled out the knife, there was nothing I could do. Please don't hurt me! I'm a bloody saint now! I thought I was going to do something really, really terrible. The knife is about four to five inches long with a wooden brown handle. I want notes. Open that safe There's now. nothing in there. I can't open it. Count it's in. broken. One, I can't two, open it. I three, swear. Four, I can't five. Open it. I can't. Jesus Christ. Come on, Chris. Come on. Is it clear down there? I could clearly see one of the two men. He was about mid 30s about five foot eight to five foot ten. His face was chubbyish and he had short black hair. He was fairly stocky. The other fellow with him was slightly shorter, but a fair bit wider. Sort of a boxer's face, a flattish nose, and from what I could see, his hair looked very, very shortly cropped, maybe even receding. Please help me. A member of my staff has been attacked. Hang on a minute, I'll have to find no, come this way, hurry. It's just over here. The driver in the car was very gaunt. His hair was a gingery brown, short, swept forward. I'd say he was about late 20s, early 30s. She's just a bit shaken. Okay. I feel really, really scared now. I can't walk on my own anymore. Yeah. Someone just has to be there with me. It's taking away a lot of my confidence. Well, Detective Sergeant John Wollstonehome, this was a professional, well-planned job. They knew what they were doing, didn't they? Yes, it was well-planned. Uh, when they made their escape, they were dressed as workmen, they were wearing hard hats, and they were communicating with the uh, use of handheld radios. Now, you know quite a bit about the getaway car. Yes, we know the getaway car was a dark blue Volkswagen Golf five-door variety. 
uh, registered number was uh, J136JPN. We know this vehicle was stolen the previous morning at 2 o'clock on Thursday, sorry, on Tuesday the 18th of July from uh, Tennyson Street in Battersea. There are some distinguishing features about the vehicle. Uh, the driver's door had a large dent in it, which actually caused problems when the door was open. And in the rear passenger window, there were two stickers. Yes, these stickers, which you see a lot, actually. Worldwide Fund for Nature, that was in the window. And also, this car is protected by Autolock. Now, that car hasn't been found yet, has it? That car's not been recovered, and we would appeal for anybody who knows the whereabouts of that car or seen it since the 18th of July to contact us. Now, although no one was actually injured, these men were very vicious and, and quite violent, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, it's a very nasty offence, and uh, obviously it's been quite traumatic for the members of staff, and some of them are still not over the... Now let's just see those artist impressions again. We've got uh, one robber one. We don't have an artist impression of the second robber, but let's have a look at the first one. Yeah, this man is about five foot eight to five foot ten, um, of a stocky, chubby build. He's got short, dark hair, mid thirties in uh, age, and his hair's brushed back. And the driver? The driver is twenty-five to thirty years, slim build. He's got short, gingery brown hair. You want information from people who may have seen them in the area a few days before? We suspect they may have been in the area um, prior to the offence, possibly days prior to the offence, keeping observations on the cash office. And we have a sighting on the 13th of July, which was the Thursday previous to the robbery, uh, where two men were seen uh, behaving dis suspiciously uh, at the cash door entry. In Cab Road uh, at Waterloo? Yes, that's correct, Cab Road. Well, thanks very much indeed, John Wollstone-Home. There is a reward here, and uh, our number to the studio, of course, is free. Please ring if you can help catch this gang of robbers, or you can alternatively contact the British Transport Police, and they're on 0171 380 pounds to be provided if you help secure the convictions of an armed gang. And here's another one for £100,000 if you can also recover what they stole. Why such a colossal reward? Well, security firms have had variable relationships with Crime Watch, sometimes keen, sometimes anxious to play down security breaches. But now a group of companies has joined together and said enough crime is enough. The trigger was the case you're about to see, the biggest ever cash robbery in Scotland. Eight weeks ago, in the oil capital of Britain, Aberdeen. Two miles south of the harbour at Alton's industrial estate. Basically, I thought they were up to something. Yeah, my van parked at the side of the road at that time of night, very quiet, all huddled up with dark clothing. He was about 5'8", wasn't a scruffy looking man. Put a moustache, came down over his lips. Next afternoon, a Thursday, on the old coast road, two minutes from the estate, and a similar white van. He wouldn't let me past. There was nothing I could do about it. I couldn't get past. He obviously didn't know where he was going. Slowing down, accelerating. straight at me. No expression on his face whatsoever. He looked like Tosh from the bill. It was very red complexion. He looked like he'd had a good night in the town. Unshaven, dark, very untidy hair. Back on the industrial estate, where a security company has a depot for its cash in transit vans. Now the staff have got a very loyal and I'm probably a father figure. And we work as a family rather than as a, as a business. You know, and we're going well together. Oh, look at this. We've got our first Christmas card. <laughs> Probably the same, but we got our first bloody Christmas card.
a raid. Open the bloody door! Locked in the control room, I'm all right, but the men are outside. These guys have got guns. I can't! Open the bloody door or else I'll shoot him! Please, open the door or he's going to shoot me! Open the front door. I could have kept the doors closed, but what could have happened? And I wouldn't have went any of my crew's death in my hands. You get a horrible gut feeling. Somebody's been in, they've, you know, they've taken something years away. You know, it's like somebody coming in, uh, turning over your house. Nearby, rush hour traffic was building, coming out of the estate. Behind the white van was a white Vauxhall senator. They turned onto the old coast road, heading south out of Aberdeen. Three miles on is the village of Port Lethen. I was raging. Yeah, I just wanted to go after the car and ask the guy what the hell he was doing. I just kept on following. He went towards Asta. Meanwhile, another witness saw the white van arrive and head towards a remote car park. When I went into Asta car park, I watched where he went. Well, I actually followed him and watched all his movements. He, like, dropped a guy off and who went into a dark blue car and I thought there was something suspicious. Well, he had dark hair. He looked like an Arab guy, like a dark-skinned. So he looked to me as though he was very suspicious. Not far from Asda is Port Lethen Church. Is the girls to get on tonight? Roll your window down. Is the girls' brigade on tonight? Let's go. He was mid to late twenties. I would have described him as being quite fat, quite clean looking, and there was nothing about the car that would have stuck out. Just a dead ordinary red escort. You know, there's thousands of them you see every day. Who was he waiting by the church? Maybe quite unconnected with the robbery. But an hour later... You be a tell, you be a tell, there are two vehicles on fire. A Vauxhall Senator and a Bedford minivan. Over. Peter Simpson, in fact, you had a huge public response on this before the reward was announced. Yeah, it's one of the biggest responses I've ever known uh, in an inquiry like this. In the first seven days, we were really inundated with information. So you know a great deal about how to track where the gang were. Of course, now you need to find out who they are. Your concentration on this huge reward is presumably because you want to detach people who are relatively close to the gang. Yeah, this reward, I think, is really intended for someone who is close to the gang, who has some int intimate knowledge of the gang, and who can give us information which will lead to their arrest and conviction. Now, how sure do you want them to be before they call? You're talking about people who've really just heard things on the grapevine, they're pretty sure they know who did it, or just people who look like any of these four or who might have had previous to this sort of thing? We certainly would welcome any suggestions at all, uh, but if anyone has specific information which would really assist us in this inquiry, uh, I can assure them that that would be treated with the strictest confidence. Now, there's a local connection because the two vehicles were stolen in Aberdeen and stored there for a couple of uh, weeks, but there's an English connection as well. One of the guys seemed to have an English accent. They stole largely Scottish currency. It's going to be pretty hard for them to get rid of that. That's large sums, largely Royal Bank of Scotland. Yeah, the vast majority of the money stolen was in Royal Bank of Scotland, 10 and 20 pound notes. And again, I'm hoping the reward uh, will stir someone to give us a call into the incident room or the studio here. Pretty nerve-wracking to do that. These guys threaten to kill people. They're going around with guns. The people are going to be frightened about their names getting out to the gang. Well, as I say, there's been no, I've personally no knowledge of any breach of confidentiality with information north of the border. And I can certainly assure the viewers that it won't happen in this case. 
Well, up to a quarter of a million pounds. The person or the people who can solve this, and uh, there's no premium line phone numbers here. It's a free call, 0500 600 600, and more officers are standing by in Aberdeen. That's 01224 386868. They say that just literally. Yes, it's the great art robbery at York. When you work in a gallery, people are coming in and out all the time. It's a relaxed atmosphere. And you don't realise that something can happen. And when it does, it, it takes you completely by surprise. I'm afraid it's locking up time, sir. Can you make your way to the downstairs exit? Sure, no problem. Normally, if you ask people to leave the gallery, they do follow you out. The chap that I'd seen had disappeared, so I went to the far end, and that's when they came out. Over here, now! Move it! On your knees, hands behind your back! Who else is in the gallery, mate? Just two downstairs. Oh, I, I suppose the bloke out the back's a ghost, is he? Come on! Well, I was shocked. It, it was fries, I think, more than anything, because you've got two guns pointing at you, and then they start telling you what to do. And at that point, you're at their mercy. What's going on? What's it look like? Come on, you. Back this way. Oh, there you are. I was wondering where you got... Back off! <laughs> Is this some kind of joke? I don't see anyone laughing, do you? Right! On the floor! Not again! Go on! Fight down! When we were actually put into the exhibition room and laid on the floor and tied, one of the first things I thought was, I'm going to be late here. <laughs> Quite an unusual thing, I don't doubt, to, to come up with, but I think it was its body's own way of shutting out the more traumatic part of the occurrence. Of the two, the smaller one was more aggressive. Just keep calm. Come on, just keep calm and hope you get hurt, right? In his movements and, and the way he spoke to us, he was quite frightening. Now you know we're serious. I think that was the most frightening time of the ordeal. Then you knew it could have used a gun. I thought it was a fancy dress party. Think it's bloody funny, do you? See how funny you find on the floor with your mates. Then I realised it was for real, and I started to say my prayers. He was away deciding what to take. One of my favourites was a turn of watercolour. And because of the necessity to keep light, from a watercolour painting, we had that item in a case. We do get attached to the items we're looking after. And we felt 
afterwards that they'd taken part of us away from the gallery. They may not be owned by us, but we have an affinity with the paintings. You get to know them and you get to like them. They may have damaged the actual paintwork, of course, because as soon as you start to manoeuvre them and especially take them out of the frames, you've got to really be very careful and know what you are doing with them. The one that was cutting the paintings from the frames was a nasty piece of work. He was very, very nervous. When he came back, we were all frightened of him. Right. Which are the most expensive paintings, then? Apart from the ones in the gold frames? You missed them, mate. <laughs> you should have been here a fortnight since, when he had the canalitos. It's lucky I'm in here with you, not Bert. I'm the good guy that tells. Wouldn't even be here if I had my way. We didn't hear anything for quite a while. So we assumed that he was doing the damage downstairs. Someone who knew about paintings and loved paintings wouldn't have damaged them in the way they did. They'd made a mess of them. That's it, Tony. We're about ready for off. About time and all. It was in my mind, at what point are they going to let me go? I didn't know what was going to happen. They did things to me that shouldn't happen. Right. That's it. All over. We're out of here. They can see you, they know you, but you don't know them. And my anger is for what they did to the gallery. Um, because we've got to work here. And I thought that was totally wrong. Well, Det Detective Inspector Phil Metcalf, I mean, these, these robbers just walked out bold as brass, didn't they, into an evening rush hour in York? Yes, that's correct. York being a tourist city, uh, we believe there'd be a number of tourists about in the area. Obviously, local people are aware of this robbery, but people who were to may not be. I would appeal for any of those people to come forward if they can help us with our inquiries. And they would have had black hole doors at about, what, half past five on the 22nd of January? Yes, that's correct. Any other clues you have at all? Yes, the robbers took with them some ties and some uh, masking tape or parcel tape, which we believe were probably purchased locally. They had a large number of ties, which they used to tie up the, uh, the victims. In addition, they threatened to gag them with the, with the tape, but they never used the tape. Mm. But the main, the main appeal is the paintings. There's, there's still 20 paintings. We have 20 reasons to chances. believe that we're going to, going to catch them. Yeah. Um, so I would appeal to anybody who knows where these paintings are to contact us. Okay. Well, Richard Green is the curator of the uh, art gallery. Now, presumably, this was the most uh, recognisable and therefore the most valuable. Well, Turner is certainly the most important artist represented in, in the, the raid. This is a very beautiful watercolour of Riva. He painted in the 1820s. Very, very vulnerable. We're terribly worried about its fate out in the world without the protection of its frame, for it was crudely smashed from its frame and is now a, a precious scrap of coloured paper somewhere in the world. There was a, a sickert of old Heffel, a, a violinist, painted early in the 20th century, and of more local relevance, a view of the Dean's Park in York, painted by Algernon Newton in the 1940s. Not one of the most famous artists, and indeed, most of the artists represented were not, not famous names, but they were works, they're works of great art historical interest, and they contributed so much to the range and breadth of our collection. Mm. Phil, briefly, £25,000 reward. Who are you particularly appealing to? Well, I believe these paintings are still low, or still in the country. I don't think they can get rid of them. Uh, they're too hot to handle at this moment in time. So I would appeal to anybody who may be offered them or who may know where they are to contact us straight away. Right, thank you very much indeed. Well, if you're offered any of those pictures at a car boot sale or whatever or if you've heard rumors about those gunmen please do let us know 0500 600 600 and there's a local number too 01904 669 389 epidemic
of an un-British sort of crime, behaviour we normally associate with lawless countries where bandits are at large. Here, it seems to be confined to one gang and to an area of northwest England. There have so far been at least 20 attacks, and probably many more. Four forces, Merseyside, Cheshire, Lancashire and Greater Manchester, have now combined their effort to catch a group of thugs who have been robbing family in their homes. And one of the unusual features is that they're content to carry out these attacks even when there are children in the house. Hello? Is this 27? It's next door. That way. The neighbours don't recall having any visitors that afternoon. But everyone in the Northwest remembers the next day, the night of Manchester United's last-minute victory in the European Cup. United fans will ask, where did you watch the 1999... For a family of five in Hale in Manchester, it was a night they can never forget. Dodo was barking outside and I went outside to see who was barking at. And I thought it was a fox. And then I saw a figure. I thought it was the boy next door who usually plays jokes and pranks on us. Go! Go! Get on the floor! Do as he says! Get down now! All right, who else is in the house? Hey, kid, I said, who else is in the house? Oh, my sister. She's asleep upstairs. Please leave her. Don't look at us. Get on the floor, I said! Keep still! The man who tied us up sounded black because his voice was richer. Give me hand, boy. Imagine if Lenny Hendry was a scouser. It sounded like that. Well, it was... It just felt as though it was surreal. I mean, it just, just wasn't happening at all. I wasn't bothered about what they took. They could, they could take it all. It was just the children I was worried about. Bracelets. The gang have tied up children as young as seven. There are common clues, despite the masks. The accents are always scouse. The wings as well. Watch. Give me the watch. There are several in the gang, from three to five on any particular attack. The big one who was giving instructions was quite close to me, and I got this dreadful smell of smoke from his clothes, and, and when he spoke, I mean, he was obviously a very heavy smoker. They took anything of value often ransacking the homes for cash or jewellery, birth certificates, adoption papers, driving licences and passports. Hands. Put your hands there. It's OK. Put them over here for you. I want to know where the cash is. Where's the safe? Tell me where the safe is. They always ask for the safe, even if there wasn't one. Outside. Get out here, you nuts. Ah, see that? I'm going to stick that right through your head, unless you tell me where the keys to the safe are. Okay? Don't worry, we'll be out of here soon. The one who stayed with us wasn't as... Nasty. Who won the match? Where are they? We did. Want to stove your head in? But he was a lot gentler and he he was a lot nicer. Close game, was it? And I think he had blue eyes because he had like very fair, very fair skin around his eyes and it, they looked blue. At least you won the treble, eh? These vivid blue eyes were seen at other attacks, and four months ago, this time in an affluent area of Liverpool. One of the attackers actually took off his mask. While a 15-year-old and a father were tied up by men wearing balaclavas, their mother upstairs got a look at one of the offenders. Well, he didn't seem to care that I was watching him, and I thought that was very peculiar, because, you know, I got a good look at him, and he was stocky and short, and he had quite a round face. Sometimes there's been real violence. In one of the attacks, just before Christmas, a woman was almost strangled. Give me the reins! 
And though they usually use screwdrivers to threaten families, in two attacks, they've used a gun. A safe? <laughs> Tell me where it is. Tell me where the safe is. I thought this kind of thing happened in banks and shops, and it was the least thing I'd expected. I didn't expect four big men to come in and tie us all up. Where are the keys to the car? The gang seems to have recruited different people for different attacks, but there are so many common features, the culprits are clearly linked. And it's not just their accents that point towards Liverpool. They often steal the family's cars, and once they were chased by the police as they raced from a raid and abandoned the vehicle in Toxteth. Chile, one can only imagine the effect this has had on the families. This has been devastating for some of the families to the point where some of them have actually moved out of their homes and will not return to them. Um, you know, it's their home and it's a place where they should feel safe and that hasn't been the case. Oh, and what about the children? The children have been very brave, but who knows what the long-term effects of, of being put through something like that. In a lot of occasions, they were sitting in the lounge watching television with their parents, doing something normal in the safety of their home. When masked men have come in, some of them actually thought that it was their friends or relatives having a laugh, but it, but it wasn't. It was something real that they really didn't expect. Most Crime Watch viewers aren't going to be able to help with this, really. I mean, it's not more witnesses you, you want. Who can help and how? I think that there's somebody or, or more than someone that is out there who actually knows the people that are involved. They may know that these people are involved in crime and involved in burglaries. What they may not know is the extent of those burglaries, how bad they actually are and what they've put these people through. Some of them elderly people and some of them very young children. How much of the property that's been stolen is traceable? Some of it is, some of it isn't. We've actually got some here tonight. There's one of the items is a platinum wedding ring and that was stolen from one of the um, houses and it had engraved inside forever in my heart now that was actually one of the ladies late husband's wedding rings so it's more of sentimental value it is than sentimental anything else value, value yes and and you've brought a picture in of a, of a watch yes the watch is a jaeger le Coultre reverso watch and that actually has engraved on the back sba now there's a reward, I gather, that's for return of property or recovery of property? It is. There's a reward of up to £70,000, but that is for the return of property. So we are looking for property to be returned. OK. These have been uh, really terrible attacks. Holding a screwdriver to a father's throat and threatening to kill him in front of his children is unacceptable in a civilised society. Stop it from happening again, please. If you know anything about who's been responsible for this, this is the time to call 0500 on a Tuesday. And shoppers were horrified when a man drew a revolver in the street and threatened to shoot people. His aim was to rob a van delivering cash. We've disguised some of the details at the request of the security firm. I'd just come back from Solihull on my push bike when I stopped at the laundrette to speak to my mother. Mum! Hello, love. I'm going to the supermarket. Do you want me to pick anything up for you? Yes, could you pick me up some washing powder? I've just finished it. It's heavy for me to carry. Yes, wife. Oh, when you're dead. Drop it. Drop it. Move away. I looked straight down the barrel of this gun and I, I looked back up into his face and he looked straight at me and I just thought, he's going to shoot me now. He was in his mid-40s, sun-tanned, very dark eyes and he had dark eyebrows, medium build, uh, probably 5'7". Got a gun! Go in, go in! The man seemed to run awkwardly. He didn't particularly sprint off quickly, so perhaps he's got a limp or something, but he didn't seem to run very well. I'm an off-duty police officer. There's an armed robbery in progress on the Hobbs Moat Road. I need an armed response vehicle. Ten minutes later, and a mile and a half away off Chelmscott Road, a resident saw a car that seemed to be on fire. When he reached it, he found red dust in the air, and the inside of the car was coated with red dye. The rover turned out to have been stolen about a month before. That afternoon, five miles away off Peterbrook Road, a local heard a strange sound coming from the verge.
And if you want to see hot money, these notes are typical of the money that's uh, been stolen. Inside, actually, some of the, the notes might be fairly clean, but many, many of them will be like that, and most of them will at least have this red stain around the edges. And if anybody offers you cash like this, please let somebody know, at the bank or the police or whatever. The gunman himself may have been drenched in this red dye, and certainly a second getaway car will have been badly stained on the inside. The pigment, I promise you, is very hard to remove. It smells horrible, but it really is very, very hard to get rid of this. The guy himself is in his 40s. He seemed very suntanned. He's shorter than average, and he had a local accent. Now, if you've any idea who he is, there's a sizable reward on this one. And a way that you can help, maybe, is if you saw that stolen car before the robbery. It was a red Rover 200, and it would have been parked up near Hobbs Mo Moat Road for some time because the, the cash van was over an hour late. 0500 600 600 here to the studio, or the instant room on 0121 712 601 instructions as we often point out we frequently downplay violence in this next one we're only going to hint at the level of brutality but what you will see is a good deal of bungling involved in the crime it happened two months ago in Guildford Surrey at 9 a.m. on Tuesday the 25th of April the cleaner of Bojangles nightclub had been working for two hours and went out to get a snack thank you love yeah bye. see you later thank you. okay bye, bye now have a nice day bye. see ya I started early because I wanted a bit of time with my family and grandchildren. They allowed me to come in earlier, which I did, so I could get off a bit earlier that day. Nearby, about the same time, a local shopkeeper overheard a conversation. The thing is, it's more fun when there's someone inside, you know? You've done one like that before? In fact, the manager of the club was abroad on business. Oh, oi! We are not messing about. Now that's not what we were told. You're lying. I'm not, I'm not, I swear! Oi! You got the keys to this? I told you. I, I'm only the cleaner. Right. Shut that and open that. If you say anything or try to get through the door, I will put a bullet in you. Go on. Let's go. Come on. Go to the door and behave as normal. Go on. Okay. I felt terrible. Terrible involved in friends of mine, women as well. Hi, Jack. All right. Not too good. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry about right. this, but there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, Don't worry. Don't worry. Just walk in there and sit down, all right? Come on, let's go. Come on. The men stole money from the staff, took SIM cards from their mobile phones, ransacked the club's fruit machines, and smashed the cigarette dispenser. But plainly, they were looking for something bigger. There's nothing here. What do you mean there's nothing here? I've been all over. There's nothing. Look in the office. Have you checked the office? Yeah, I'll go there next. All right, who works in the office? You work in the office. Come on, go on, go with him. Go on, move. Come on. Let's go over. Right, hurry up. Where are the keys? Where are the keys to the I safe? I don't know. I wouldn't have them. Right. Where are the keys to the safe? I don't know. I wouldn't have them. Give us a fact, darling. And stop crying, will you, Pops? I'm getting fed up with this. Who's got the keys to the safe? Did you leave him alone? Look what you've done to him. Ricky. Right, Ricky's got the keys, the assistant manager. And where is he? When's this Ricky coming in? I don't know. He was here till three last night. He's still in bed. He'd be here after one. It's not good enough, folks. Now, what are we going to do to get him in here now? Jack, you're going to have to phone him. Tell him, tell him what was coming in on the new carpet. Yeah, all right, I will. Yeah, yeah, all right. Not answering. Well, maybe we'll just have to go and knock him up then, won't we? Come on. The two men seemed clueless about what to do next. They helped themselves to cans of Red Bull energy drink, and they became increasingly impatient.
they also express strong views on the club's record collection. What is this crap? Have you got any garage? Right, come on, let's go. Come on, let's move, Pop, with me. Go on, move. Here you are, have these. Look after them. Come on, let's go. Come on. Jack, Jack, just slow down and start again. And remember, you woke me up to tell me this. The old place is flooded. Uh, and yet that new carpet is totally ruined. Jack, you do not need me to tell you to call a plumber. Call a plumber. Please, boss, you've got to come in. Jack. Call a plumber. The water board, the council. Call the bloody coast guard for all I care, but please, sort it out. Please, boss, you've got to come in right away. Right away, boss. All right. Oh, Ricky, please, right, right. away. Right. Jack, I'll be in in half an hour. It'll be in half an hour. Right, good. Come on. Around 11.30, a white Ford Sierra was parked outside the nightclub and got a parking ticket. Did you see it there? Or did you see a driver? Jack! So where's this flood then? Put the briefcase down. Put it down. Right, in here. Come on, let's go. Move, move. I'm sorry, Ricky, they just saw me. Right. Right. You're OK, mate. Yeah. Go on, on the floor. Don't look at me. Don't okay, look okay. at me, all right? I want the keys to the safe. I don't have the keys to the safe. Don't mess me about. I'll take your kneecaps out. I've done it before and it ain't a problem. Oh, God, please don't do that Jack. to him. It's all right, Jack. Just try and stay calm, mate. Just try and stay calm. Wait. Oh. Look at this. There's not enough money in there. It's all we've got. We use a night safe. You don't use a night safe. Look, do you think if I had the keys to the safe, I'd be carrying all that money around in a briefcase? Don't try then. Okay, check all the doors. These keys don't work. What do you mean they don't work? They don't open the safe. Right. Where's the beer cellar? Where is it? It's out the back. Come on, up on your feet. Let's go. Move. Come on. All right. By now it was 12.30, a busy lunchtime, and police want to trace all the witnesses. They also want to find the driver that nearly collided with the gang. Hey, look where you're going! Help! Help! Quick, call the police! There's been a robbery! They've got guns! The car made off down Woodbridge Road into Ladymead. Stand still! All right, all right. The others are in the back. Meanwhile, the gang headed towards the northbound A3. Don't run. Walk towards me quickly. Go to the rear of my vehicle. I don't think I will ever forget it. Never. I wouldn't like to be in the club ever again on my own. That's how frightened I was. And one phone call could earn you £10,000 if you can solve this. And there are lots of clues too. For example, where's that getaway car? A white Sierra with a black spoiler. The registration, we think it's a legitimate, the right registration, F of Freddy 681 WBD. Do you recognize this distinctive bag with this camel motif on it? The gang used something very much like it to carry away the cash. Did you see the gang before the attack hanging around? We know one witness spotted them in Sydenham Road in Guildford. Did you see them break into the club around uh, nine in the morning or make their getaway around half past 12? Or were you in that car that nearly collided with theirs? The date, Tuesday, April the 25th, about two months ago, the day after Easter bank holiday. Call the studio number 0500 600 600 or the incident room on 01 483 484. Now is ready to shop a villain. But when he first rang the police, he wanted a reward. There wasn't one. Well, there is now. And whoever calls first can claim it. It was a normal Monday morning. I got up, put my dressing yeah, gown on, went straight into oh, my I'm office. I was on the phone yes. to my friend. That was my morning until I was interrupted. All right, we'll go. Oh, hang on, there's somebody at the door. Hang on a minute, darling. I've got a 
rushed a letter for you. Okay, hang on, I'll be right down. I have to go. Call you back. Bye. When I went out to take the package, I had no reason to believe that he was not a postman. He was dressed in the postman's outfit, and I didn't give it a second thought. Hi. What have you got for me? I've got this package for you, but uh, I need you to sign for it. Oh. We are, we've got a new uh, procedure now. I need uh, to see some ID, please. Oh, OK. I'll go and get something. Hi, Toby. When he came through the door, he was very motivated. He knew exactly what he was doing. Give me your hand. Look, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to rape you. OK? As we progressed through what was happening, right. he was getting more and more panicky. Right, you. Sit there. Stay there. All right. Oi! Oi! No, no! Go on, get down. Oh. Get down. This way. A bit tired this time, shall we? Oh. Right. Oh. Up. Oh. Go on. Through there. Sit there. Mm. And this time, go move, all right? I was sat, sat back down on the kitchen stool and he put a mask on his face. And I just thought he was trying to frighten me with that and just stay calm. He then got the gun out. Look, I don't want to hurt you. And I'm not going to rape you. I just want money and jewellery. OK, OK, I'll, I'll give you what you want. Right then, come on. Uh, upstairs. I said, I've got some cash upstairs. And he then sort of frog marched me upstairs. Uh, right, where's the money? It's in there, in the basket under the newspaper. could see that he was starting to get agitated and panicky. I want more jewellery. I had a cross and chain round my neck which he ripped off. He ripped off a ring from my finger. Oh, no, please, not that one. That was my mother's. It's not worth very much, but it means a lot to me. Yeah, don't lay that one on me. Come on, there's got to be more money in this place. Come on, downstairs. You must have more stuff in this house. Antiques everywhere. He thought that we had uh, lots of money and lots of jewellery at the house, which we don't have. John owes a lot of people a lot of money. He said that my husband owed people money, which isn't true, and it, it was like it was his excuse for doing what he was doing. Come on, let's go back upstairs. There must be some more up there. Right, get in there. Oh. Lie down there, face down. Oh. There wasn't any chance for me at all while I was laying on the bed. At this stage, I did feel very, very vulnerable, so I sat myself up. At that point, I tried to hit the burglar alarm. He then hit me over the head with a gun. I want more money and more jewellery. I'm going to count to three, right? One. It's in the office. Right. Come on, then. Sit down there. Oh, oh, my friends will be here in a minute. Now, where's the money? Up there. Right. Uh, Come on, get down there. Down there. Uh, down there. Stay there. Uh, he ran downstairs and I got up. I heard my car start up, and I could see that he was reversing out.
I think I'm quite a strong person and I just feel that this person won't get the better of me. He kept saying to me that you're being an awkward lady and I just felt that I would just want if I wanted to stand up to him. The thing about this case, Andrew, is, is it would almost be funny, you know, if he hadn't been so violent. I mean, what are we to make of this business with the mask? He comes in without a mask, then he puts the mask on as if he wants to disguise himself, then he takes it off again. We don't know. We, we think he may have just panicked, or it may be that he's not an experienced criminal who started off with a very serious offence. And what about this? I mean, I don't know how much you can tell him, but this, all this is is a, is a cardboard tube with some wrapping paper around it. And he wanted to use it so much, he left it outside, he, he actually went out uh, to get it and come back in the house again. What on earth was he thinking he was going to achieve with this? We have absolutely no idea. Uh, it, as you say, he went outside to get it, but he actually left it behind. And if anybody's seen this or if anybody helped make it, please get in touch. Well, what, what do we know about him? We, we do know that he's very like the actor who played him in the reconstruction. The lady who was robbed said the, the robber was a little younger than the actor and uh, not quite as heavily built. He has staining at the front of his teeth and obviously the very distinctive ponytail. Now, he, he didn't get away with that much. That's why he was so persistent in saying to him, well, you must have more money, you must have more jewellery. Um, in terms of jewellery, he took um, one quite distinctive thing. There's this uh, snake-type bracelet here, and what, it was a necklace, wasn't it, he took, that's that, right. that matches this? It, it's a matching set. The necklace is exactly the same, only larger. Where is that necklace? Has anybody given it to you as a present, perhaps? And then um, he tried to make a getaway. In fact, of course, then he very nearly didn't get away because he couldn't work out how to get out of the gate. But then he only went, what, a couple of hundred yards? He, he went 200 yards and p abandoned the car in the car park of Haberdasher S School. It was 10.45 on the 10th of September. That's the day before the terrorist attack at the World Trade Center. Did you see that car being abandoned? Did you see him making off in any other car? OK, well, as I said before, there's the, someone who called in before but wasn't too keen to give any information because there wasn't a reward at the time. There is a reward now. It's a big reward. But if you want to call in, you better do so fast because the first person who calls in with the information will get the reward. The number is 0500 600 600 or you can call 01707 638 2 Schoolboy dreams. You find yourself watching an armed robbery and you manage to trail the gunman as he tries to get away. Well, in fact, he did get away in this case, but only just and empty-handed. In fact, quite literally, red-handed, because he didn't realise that most cash boxes are booby-trapped. It was a shambolic end to what he must have thought was so well planned. It started with three thefts. Taxi markings. Registration plates. and a blue Cavalier SRI, all taken from Sefton, north of Liverpool. The following week, the stolen car was seen in the Meadows Pub car park in Magull. It had the taxi markings and the stolen plate, and maybe you noticed it. It was there for some time. I pulled up outside the bargain booze um, about 20 past one, went in to do the normal collection. And after making the collection, coming out the store, I saw somebody running towards me. I was petrified. Didn't really hear him say anything. Then the gun basically speaks for itself. We've seen this man run towards us. As he was coming closer, he hesitated to know which way to go. The robber then headed straight for a back garden that backed on to the pub car park. The boys, meanwhile, headed for a vantage point further down the road. and then looked over the Meadows car park wall, seen them running past us, and then through underneath bushes and underneath the bridge. <laughs> 
Dripping wet, but trying to look inconspicuous, he started to change his appearance. I'll sell you a magazine, love. I'll pick it up then, shall I? It was a program from an old Everton match, but soaking wet. Excuse me, mate. Carrion Rubble is a man came up to me and asked me if he could stand with me because he'd been jumped by a gang of youths. I know. Just want to dirty myself up, make it look as I've been working with you, if that's all right. He's pointed to the boss's van, which was in the driveway, and asked if he could get a lift somewhere because he needed to get away from the area as quick as possible. my van to give you the lift. He was about 5'9 to 6'2 tall, late 20s. Medium build with short brown hair, and he had a deep Scouse accent. Hello? He moved around to the back of the house, and then he looked up in the sky and noticed that there was a police helicopter circling overhead. Is that your van? Yeah, it is, yeah. Could you give us a lift, mate? I'll be ten minutes. No, look, I'm sorry, I'm too busy. Please, please. Lab, I can't give you a lift. I don't even know you. I'll only be ten minutes. No. Look, what? police I mean, everywhere, you know. Go and give the police a call. Why don't you go and get the police? I'll go and give them a shout for you, mate. What? Yeah, go on, you go on. Don't shoot there! Don't call the police! I was concerned that he may have lashed out and merely predict what he was going to do. Then he rang for the taxi. Hello? And a taxi, he knew please. the address immediately. He didn't have to ask for this address. He just asked for the taxi to this address. It had taken 10 minutes for the cab to come. The police, meanwhile, were searching the whole area. Whereabouts in Ormskirk do you want to be? Yeah, just the main part. As soon as he went, the builders went straight up the road and told the police what had happened. Is that you? What? The smell of smoke. Yeah, sorry about that. We've been burning rubble and clearing house. You haven't seen a woman round here with a pram, have you? <laughs> There's a lot of those, mate. Yeah. It's me missus, I owe her money. That's why I'm keeping me head low, if you know what I mean. Oh, fair enough. He'd asked to go to Ormskirk, but kept directing the driver down curious routes, and he got out at the Scotch Piper Inn at Lydiard. Look at the EFIT, think of his behaviour, and give us a ring, 0500 600 600, or 0151 777.